Everyone, Christian here, and as you can see, it's raining quite a bit, but I found a very nice specimen of what is called a palm, but what is not actually a palm. So that is Ravenala madagascariensis, more commonly known as the traveler's palm, or better, better to say, traveler's tree. Even though it's not a tree, it's not a palm, it's a uh, herbaceous, um, I don't know the te technical thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't have, uh, it's not a dicot, so it's not an actual tree, but it's not a palm. Um, so it's just think of it as like a large grass. So as you can see here, it looks quite a bit like a very large banana. And I'm sure that many of you that watch this are familiar with this species and may see it in Florida, in Australia, Madagascar. It's become a very popular um, uh, landscape plant. Although it does take up quite a bit of room, especially if you plant more than one. One plant will technically have a trunk like this and then the suckers around it, maybe like three or four. This is like a massive, uh, there's like five or six of them planted here. You can see one, two, it's probably three, and probably at least two or three more behind there. And these leaves probably are 20 feet high because they reach almost up to the top of this two-story building. So um, let's see if I can get back here. So the, the neat part about this plant is the reason they call it the traveler's tree is because you can take cutting right here chop that and see how the rain this is actually perfect I'm glad it's raining because when it rains you can use this well up here there's right there as you can see there's a little bit of a gap in the in this leaflet and it'll gather water and you can drink it out of the base of wherever you cut it so when a traveler was traveling through the forest say Madagascar or elsewhere where it's growing they could use it as a rain catching mechanism so it was it was popular for travelers to be near the near the tree or near the, near the plant so they could gather waters and it's was easier for them in an unfamiliar area that is what that's what the book says so um, that's what I've always been told so some people said that you know you could cut it and there would already be water in it which is possible too if it rained I don't see why that would not be true so you can see that this is actually grown in a relatively sheltered area there's a, there's a brick wall there brick wall here and then it kind of comes around this is a somewhat of a, some kind of office building and uh, you have a big oak tree here so with the sheltering the leaves actually stay quite entire most of the time you'll see these pretty shredded and you can see some of the outside ones have been shredded over time with the wind so uh, any kind of tropical stor storm force winds will shred the leaves a bit or even a big storm if they're dry if they stay nice and wet then they will um, they won't shred as often just because they just the dryness kind of makes them more brittle so these will also produce flowers um, I don't know what time of the year but I've just kind of seen them they'll kind of do it randomly I believe I don't believe they have a certain flowering time but uh, they have flowers similar to that of a bird of paradise uh, more of a white bird of paradise this is they, they are related but they're not in the same genus so and they also grow nearby each other this is native to Madagascar the white bird of paradise is native to South Africa but this is often considered a palm by many people who do landscaping, even though it's not. It, even though it does grow like a palm, so it is, it's a broad leaf uh, monocot. Is the best way I can explain that. So palms are monocots as well. But I'll go through some more of the uh, scientific terms at a later point. But you can see, we'll try to get the entirety of this. My phone likes to. Uh, make me think that when, when I press record it actually zooms in so I have to actually back up a little bit I don't realize that I'm actually zoomed in when I want to show more of the plant so you can see there's probably 25 growths coming out of here and it's a great specimen when it is not in the Sun it'll also show this silvery uh, glaucus kind of crown here and in the Sun and that kind of goes away it just turns this kind of dull green so um, and these do have seeds to them. They are, I believe, in the flower. I've never collected them. I've had them in my hand. So, uh, I mean, I've had them in my hand to grow, but I've never actually collected them off a tree because it's just usually they're t it's too tall to get to. So I just haven't bothered. They're readily available if you want. There's probably, you can probably get a thousand for 25 bucks and just throw them all in a huge pot. And if you want to grow a lot of these, they're really easy to grow. Just grow them like you would a banana, a lot of sun, a lot of water and they will start going. So I'll leave, it, leave that there. I know this isn't a normal palm, but a lot of people ask about this plant, and I am gonna try and branch into other tropicals, as I've mentioned before, so 
Sorry about the stabilization on the camera here, but it seems to want to... There we go. So anyway, I'm going to leave that there and hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any questions about the Traveler's Tree or Traveler's Palm or Traveler's Plant, uh, leave them down below and I will answer them to the best of my abilities. Now, one more thing before I go. This is probably a Zone 9B plant. It looks best in Zone 10 though, so it'll take about 30 degrees. So I'll leave that there and thanks for watching everyone.